Hello and welcome back to our 2021 Oshkosh adventure. We just started our 2,000 mile return journey back west. In this episode, we travel from the Baraboo, Wisconsin Dells Airport, avoiding a large storm to our north, and head into Fort Dodge, Iowa. The total time for this leg was 245 miles and took 2 hours 37 minutes. We were so tired after arriving into Baraboo, I didn't get any footage from there. But we did get a good night's sleep and we're now ready for a full day's flying. Couldn't have got here without you. We have one wheels. It's a proper YouTube video about aviation. There's a one wheel. Ah, is he going to the carbon cab? Yes, he is. Clear prop. Dells Airport. Automated weather observation. One, two, three, three. Zulu weather. Wind calm. Visibility one, zero. Clear below one, two thousand. Temperature one, niner. Celsius dew point one, niner. Altimeter three, zero, zero, five. Hey, Max, check out. Nope. Zerabu Dells good. Airport. Automated weather oh, observation. Working. One, two, three, three. Zulu weather. Wind What's calm. Working? Visibility one oh, zero. Wait. Clear below one two thousand. Temperature one niner. Celsius dew point one niner. Altimeter three zero zero five. If you want my vote, I'm happy to just have small stuff and get going again before it gets too warm. But what do you mean? Just just go as far as we can. Just go as far as we can before we actually sit down for a meal. I'd rather do the noon meal. And just yeah, have it's a just snack. there's a restaurant on that airport. That's yeah. why I picked it out. I just figure that'll make it an hour and a half, two hour stop or whatever. Oh, I know. So. I agree. All right, did all the run-ups back there, so we are just good to go. Automated weather observation. One, two, three, six. Zulu weather. Wind calm. This Wind calm. Oh. Wait. Window up. You little bird. Cameras are on and recording. Deck, and you're good down there with the voice. Yes, All right. voice is Bob on. Reed. Bob Rudell's traffic silver coupe departing runway 19, straight out departure. Dells. Forward temperatures and pressures good. Pedal. 
The belt's tight. Yes. Fuel's gushing out of the fuel cap. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> yeah. Great. <laughs> you can probably smell it. The mine's facing the right direction, at least. I don't see fuel out of it, though. Fill up now. Oh. Sorry. Bye bye, that made for a blurry thing. Wisconsin Dells. Oh, look, that's the cloud. The misty. Oh, yeah. There's mist over there. Okay, have a second. Dell's traffic, so for a coupe is making a right turn out to the west, uh, parting the area. Dell's. Going west. Well, that'll be nicer, because the sun will be behind us. Right. Oh, it wasn't too bad on the way out. Well, that was a nice little airport, and I understand why they didn't want campers and all that. Yeah, it'd probably look like the circus broke down if they did that. Exactly. <laughs> Open tents everywhere. So that makes sense. Bell tower. To your right, no factor. That was interesting talking to Jean at my mom's house about the Dust Bowl in the 30s. Yes. Yeah, he's he's got first hand knowledge. Yeah. Because he was born into that, right? I mean he wasn't. He was born sometime working. in the twenties. Yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. So I expect he was a kid, right? I mean he was a kid for sure. During that time. And the reason that popped into my head is they have some nice contoured farming around here. And if what I read, in, or not read, but what I learned in my history books is that during the Dust Bowl they started doing more contoured farming, putting up in places where they didn't have hedgerows or windbreaks. They started doing more of that because just they needed to, to stop the soil from disappearing. During a drought, you know? I see. Because that was an environmental catastrophe, not just a drought. But I remember back in the 90s, I was reading that because of lack of contour farming and lack of um, what do you mean contour farming? Farming on the hills? Yeah, you see how yes. those are going around the hills so that yes. the water runoff doesn't run straight down a row. If you just have a row going straight over that hill, like if here's a hill and you just have a bunch of rows going like this, ah, okay. the water will run off in both directions and you'll have a bald patch at the top. Baraboo traffic, experimental 121 Delta Delta taking runway 19 Baraboo. And if you're going around like this, it'll keep that water in there and, you know, if you're going around it, you're following the contour of the land more. Like On flatland, it's fine, but whenever you get more hilly spots, and if you imagine, this is very forested, but if you imagine further west, in like southern Minnesota, where there weren't as many trees or they were taken down, I don't know, you planted, instead of just having a fence between two fields, if you put up trees there, it would slow that wind down when you had drought. Yeah, okay. I wonder if a dell is the same as a, a dale, over hill, over dale, or is that a vale, over hill, over vale? I might have to look the that Yorkshire, up. Yorkshire dales. Dales, I wonder if dales is a, dells, the derivative of dales, like a German or something. They have, uh, there's another dells up in uh, the Columbia River Gorge, I think, isn't there? Oh no, that's the dells. What are all these words? Uh, I'm not looking for definition, I'm looking for history of what's the official... Et etymology. Etymology. Oh, well, we don't seem to have the headwind. That's good. 
Okay, Dell, Old English, Dell, Dell, Hollow, Dale. Ah, uh, see? Same as Dale. It's all the same. Yep, that's what I figured it must be. Very close. Perhaps lost and then borrowed in Middle English from Cognate, Middle Dutch, Middle Low German, Della. 1-4, headed northeast. Baraboo. Baraboo. B. Does that mean you have to go through that crack? No, I think we're just going to go over it. <laughs> but that doesn't look as good to go over. Um, we can see the other side, so again, I wouldn't even be too worried about that. We know it's going to burn off later in the day, so I think that's okay. There's a stream of aircraft coming our way. Uh oh, following us, going in the same direction. Okay. Yeah, look at all those. Have you got some uh, video of those? Yeah, yes. that's pretty, isn't it? Oh. Make sure you're lit. Yeah. Like I said, it's a nice contour farming. If you've got the wing in a bit way there. I know. Very Bring nice. our prop sometime. Yes, if we have tailwinds, we must not uh, stop. <laughs> or squander them in any way. What's the direction we're heading to? We're heading west. To, I mean, to where? <laughs> um, Mason City. Okay. Iowa. Yeah, it looks very pretty down there. Yeah. Have you been there? Yes. This, this area? I think in, when I was a teenager, yeah. It's a big vacation place. I'm kind of thinking I came with Dad and Dar when I was very younger. Yeah, look, there's a... There's a little flight of aircraft all heading the same direction as us. Is there? A little probably left uh, Oshkosh this morning. Yeah. Oh, Mississippi! We go over the Mississippi! Ah! Far ahead is that, that will be... About 20 minutes we'll be going over the Mississippi. Alright, so since we're coming up to the Mississippi, right away then I heard in my head what popped up was a map that I had seen a number of months back about how the Native Americans viewed um, their map, their mental maps of, or physical maps maybe in some cases, of um, the land around them. And it was all based on the rivers, of course, because those were the main transport right. systems. So when right. you said Mississippi, I was like, yeah, because Mississippi is also a Native American word. I don't know if it's Sioux or Lakota, I don't remember which, who, who's named it, which language. Yeah, it looks like the weather's going to be really bad there tonight at Oshkosh. Is it? Storms. Yes, yeah. Well, I'm happy to be out of the tent then. Because it's nice, it's hard to leave when it's... It was. Such a nice group of people. Yeah. And you don't know when you'll see them all again, because... Our, our little air coop family there. Yeah. Alright, so Ken is uh, Ken Myers from home. He's, uh, he's just getting there. Okay. He says he's arranged a hangar for tonight. Can I ask you to hold the wings level? I'm going to check on this. Uh, this is showing yellow there. That needs to be uh, green. Yes, I have control of the aircraft. You have it. There's one of those uh, classic Oxbow Lakes there, where the river has meandered and left its oh. a little bit there. Uh -huh. nice. It's now a little lake. Created a new path for itself. I bet that empties into the uh, Mississippi pretty soon up here. So, you see how huge the Mississippi is here already, just uh, like an hour from 
Minnesota from Minneapolis. But I didn't have the uh, radar layer turned on. And Diane just had a text from her mum saying it was raining and going to be storms. And I thought, why am I not seeing that? Turn on the radar and look at that. Luckily, just to the north of our track, so... Animate that and see which way it's moving. Oh yeah, our direction. Okay, so we need to be aware, very aware of that. What, what's this little bit river called here? This is the Mississippi. Ah, that one. M I S S I S S I P P I. That's pretty big. Solid. Quite long. Fairly involved in the history of the U.S. There's a boat out there. Yeah, very cool to see that. Yeah. Okay, the name Mississippi comes from the Anishinaabe people, the Ojibwe, that's how we know them. Okay. And they called the river Mississippi, or B-C-C-B, which means big river or father of waters. The father of waters? Yes. Okay. Dakota Indians called the river Ahawak. Uh, meaning River of the Falls, in reference to the falls we call the Falls of Saint. Oh wow, some amazing scallops. What, are those man-made or...? What are you seeing? I'm seeing these scalloped edges on these little islands, like sandbar islands. I'm trying to... I don't know if that's natural or man-made. Uh? I can't see what I'm doing. But they'd be in the upper right hand corner and they're already gone. Maybe I can get them out the back. There it is. I'm looking at that. It looks like a scythe. Scythe. An island and they have little scallops all along both sides of it. I'm guessing that's natural. But I am curious. And there's another one off to the left. Alrighty, well, that made me happy. Good. Thank you for the information. You're welcome. I like it when you do that. I do too. I like learning about stuff. Or reminding my brain about things that have been filed away for many, many years. <coughs> did we come through Iowa? We didn't, did we? We did last Yes, time. but not, not this trip. No. Another state added to the trip. Okay, the Mississippi River has a watershed. Okay. Drains all or parts of 31 states and two Canadian provinces. Wow. It drains 41% of the continental United States and is the third largest watershed in the world. Yeah, so I think we've changed our destination to Hamptons, Iowa. Okay. You know what, someday we should fly the length of the Mississippi for fun. Okay. And I will give you more Mississippi River facts because... <laughs> they're saying there's 241 species of fish and 292 bird species use the Mississippi flyby, flyway. And a couple air coops. <laughs> yeah, look at this. This is closing down a bit, Diane. Their mothers I'm are gonna here. I'm going to start getting nervous again now, Diane. Okay. I'll give you some sugar. That should help. A little quarry here by the town of Postville, Iowa. And they've been pulling something out for quite a long time there. Maybe not so active now. Yeah, these guys are all bolting for this other airport here. West Union, we may have to stop. Which one? Or maybe we carry on to this old Wheaton airport. But yeah, oh. we have to head south. 
Because this is encroaching very quickly. Yeah. Can't mess with this. Alrighty. That is the West Union Airport. We're still in Wisconsin. Little and in the field. <laughs> oh yeah. He's waving. Yay! Yeah, there's lots of channels through these cornfields. Oh yeah, it must be just natural gullies that they don't plant with seed. Okay. So today, partly cloudy skies this morning will become overcast during the afternoon. Stray severe thunderstorm is possible. High of 88, wind southeast at 5 to 10. Tonight, at Oshkosh, 96% chance of precipitation. One inch, 1.03 inches. Oh no. Thunderstorm, some strong, especially early. Storms may produce large hail and strong winds. Oh, 69 Fahrenheit. South southeast winds shifting to west southwest at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Chance of rain 100%. Rainfall possibly over one inch. When was um, wow. Philip leaving? Uh, I, I just spoke to him and uh, he said, Yeah, you made a good decision. I'm stuck here now. Nothing I can do to get past this. They've just got to wait for that to come through. Oh no. Get in the hangar. Uh, I imagine he's tied down well, that's... What else can you do? You just... So, are you thinking we're doing the Nebraska route? Yes, I am. Yeah, that's what I was planning out last night. I was trying to time the arrival of Laramie for the last flight of the day so we can take off from Laramie okay. first thing the next morning. Okay, so... Clear being <laughs> this. You're actually seeing a different radar to me here. I'm getting the one from the ADSB. You're getting that off the internet. Okay. You kind of get a bit more detail. Yeah. Yeah, it's looks moving. Like I'm glad we didn't leave any later than we did. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, because there's a lot of lightning up pretty much straight. Uh -huh. Looks like it's coming. There's a bunch of lightning. Yeah. Up there in that system. Yeah, those are the cells. And I think that it's probably good to drop south as we yeah, go. Yeah, I agree. What do you say? A, a dang deep hole? <laughs> it is funny, but the reason I say that is I was once in the Philippines for Dynamar. The, the roads were terrible. They were like the main roads, but still they were just, you know, washed out in places and whatnot. And people would put up homemade signs. You know, when there was something particularly bad, they put up a homemade science because they weren't... Oh, you know, this was in the 1990s. Right. Apparently they didn't have well-kept roads or road signage. So, there was this homemade piece of wood that somebody <laughs> wrote D-A-N-G. They tried to write danger, but they ran out of space. <laughs> it was a spacing issue. And they didn't. I see. So, yeah, so it said dang, and then there was a er underneath, and then they wrote deep hole, but from a distance as you were approaching, it was like dang deep hole. <laughs> I'm not sure what this place is. Near Waverly and Clarksville, Iowa. Big old train depot. It doesn't look like a power station. Maybe that's what that is. Is that they find and they find a yeah. useful? Yeah. Well, I learn enough from those guys, so. Right. So we could go on further here. We've got Fort Dodge. As far as that, that's another another half an hour we could do that. Your call, but I'm fine with that. Alright, let's do that. So we're gonna change to Delta. 
Rainbow Dodge Regional. 66 miles, 44 minutes. Okay. What's this town? This town is, if you're looking at, is Dumont. We have windmills. Our base is good. They're turning in this location. Fort Dodge Regional Airport. Automated weather observation. One, four, three, seven. Zulu. Wind calm. Highlander traffic seven five one zero. Five 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 five
Oh, I thought you were on final. Okay, uh, I'm just overhead, going to turn down one left for uh, three zero. Okay, I don't see you at the moment, but so Brecoop is turning final on runway six for touch. There he is. And yeah, Coop has the uh, RV inside. We should be stopped before we get to your runway. Sure. Hey, Papi Charlie, it's down one left, three zero for a full stop. There's the maintenance. And for Dodge traffic, Silver Oak is off runway 30, taxiing on Bravo to the fuel and sandwiches. Okay, I'll follow you. Better have sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> you order takeout, delivery. <laughs> you deliver some sandwiches. Oh, good. That was a good leg, Diane. That was. And we got around under that storm. Yeah. That to sweep the runway? That's a 150 with massive tires. That's hilarious. Me, I was with left husband uh, fueling with a bunch of other Oshkosh people who heard there might be sandwiches and air conditioning here. Once again, thanks for watching. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. A big thank you also to my Patreon supporters. That help really means a lot. See you soon as we head into Nebraska.